Welcome to the MLS Review Show. As the season turned the corner, the league was on the move. Player moves dominated headlines, world powers moved in on the league, and the underdogs moved up the standings. All that and more, this is the MLS Review Show. The transfer window opened and the changes came quickly. The Red Bulls announced the signing of goalkeeper Frank Roast as the team's third designated player. The 38-year-old looks to solve New York's inconsistent play in net. Vancouver also brought in a new DP. Gambian striker Mustafa Jarju joins a Whitecaps side looking to turn around in the second half of the season. Looking to turn ties into wins, Chicago brought in Argentine midfielder Sebastian Grazzini, and while Toronto were not in action this week, the Reds were active. The team acquired Terry Dunfield from Vancouver, added Ryan Smith in an exchange that saw Alan Gordon, Nana Atacora, and Jacob Peterson sent to the Earthquakes, then received Andy Iro and Leandro Graffit from Columbus for Tony Chani. Even more moves were sure to happen as teams bolster their sides for the playoff push. The World Football Challenge kicked off with New England packing Gillette Stadium when Manchester United descended on their first MLS opponent. The Revolution kept the Red Devils off the board in the first half, but after pulling several starters, the Revs could not keep up. An onslaught of pressure and a Frederico Makeda brace led Manchester United to victory 4-1. Uh, James off the <laughs> Is oh, Ben going to He's going to claim that, isn't he? Losing the marker, there's the first touchdown, quick release, very cheeky, awesome, the weight of the pass, perfect. Just the understanding, and that's what it is, look at that, I'll give it right back to you, there you go, you do the rest. Stevie Nichol and Sir Alex Ferguson, and this is a kind of result that Sir Alex and Manchester United wanted. A rain-soaked Vancouver was to play host to Real Salt Lake, but a combination of the weather and a temporary grass field for the World Football Challenge made the surface unplayable forcing the game to be postponed to a later date. Coming up on the MLS Review Show, Colorado enters CenturyLink Field against a streaking Seattle side. Hey, it's Charlie Davies with Keith United, and you're listening to Extra Time Radio. The Extra Time Radio podcast comes out every Monday and Thursday on iTunes and Buzzsprout. You can also listen to each episode at MLSsoccer.com slash extra time we're a soccer podcast <laughs> and i have no friends i like to tie my shoes well we'll we'll get back to some women's evening wear talk you guys are too old it's only for eight-year-old boys what's Phones wrong with that and, yeah, this is your tweet of the week janino's not going to win a game for you they're a sign of the apocalypse th 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 that's why he's here fans we want to hear from you you're encouraged to email extra time at mlssoccer.com or tweet at Extra Time Radio with any comments, questions, or reactions. Welcome back. Next on the MLS Review Show, will Jeff Cunningham get his shot at the goal-scoring record? But first, our match of the week. Seattle take on a Colorado side looking to make a statement. The Sounders were unbeaten in eight and were fresh off a U.S. Open Cup win over the Galaxy. So Ziggy Schmidt was looking for more of the same against Colorado. Seattle's depth was returning to health with Pat Noonan and Nate Jaqua close to breaking into the starting lineup. Freddie Montero's return to form was proving too much for opposing defenders. Colorado got their first win in five games last week, but against cellar-dwelling Vancouver. If the defending champs wanted to separate themselves from the middle of the strong Western Conference, they'd need to win consistently and against top-tier opponents. Seattle fans may have been hoping to heckle Brian Mullen, but the midfielder was left home with a lingering injury. J.P. Delacamera and Kyle Martino were at a packed CenturyLink field with a call. Hunter Casey walked off the pitch here with a towel over his head after a head injury that he picked up during the course of the match. Those long balls that hit over top, they're going to check up a little bit. That's a very dangerous weapon to have. And when you have Marvell Wynn out there, that's not as much dangerous on the other side. Top of the area, Wills Thompson! 
it, and it's already 1-0. Good first touch, low, hard, far post. Casey Keller not able to get on that one. Montero able to turn on the ball. Excellent ball into the space. Eric Freeberg with the chance. Levesque to follow up. Pickens with the save. Beautiful through ball, perfectly paced. But look at Marvell wins pace to catch up here. Gets the shoulder on Freeberg as he comes through the middle. Levesque trying to follow up. Good save here from Pickens. Again, the through ball, this time intended for Alvaro Fernandez. Gets inside the area. Ronaldo! Good ball in from Alonzo, but look at this. Cuts it back, but look at the strength. Keeps himself up, takes a look, gets in that far post. Oh, non-contact injury right there as Connor Casey went down. Almost looked like his foot slid out from underneath him. Marshall deflects it back in for Pickens. Is it a knee or an ankle? Well, anytime you see this, it's hard to tell. Looks over to the bench and signals that there will indeed need to be a change for Connor Casey. Up and over the top. Wells Thompson scored the game's first goal. Back out top. Lorenzo is looking for the corner. It's 2 1. As the double team comes, puts it right there for Lorentowitz, but look at that left-footed shot, his weaker foot. And just to give you an idea, as Rosales brings this one down in front of Drew Moore. Near post, the back on the back post! 2-2! Absolutely fantastic. All he does is get the slightest of touch with the outside of his left foot and gets that in the only spot. Equal possession there for the Rapids. Here comes Alonzo. There you see what I was talking about earlier. Nine goals in the last 15 minutes of games this season for the Sounders. Chance in front. Evans onto the back post. It's loose. It's in. Well, it all starts with look at how high this line is. Why would you be that high? Look at it. It's just a sprinting contest at that point. Beautiful slipped in ball here. And Evans does a great job of following this up. Lorenzo with a poor touch. Get a lucky deflection, but Montero right there. Diving header. Puts it in, and the DP, Montero, has been huge for them lately. Seattle maybe not done yet. In behind for Rosales. 4-2! Again, a high line with no pressure on the ball. It's going to burn you every time. A little lucky deflection comes through. Going back to my point about Montero, like any good goal scorer, they find the right moments to show up. Back post, what a save by Keller. The full one gets one back. It's a great first save here. Ball comes in, first header. Look at this save from Keller. Bowen following up. Trying to slow up the Sounders attack. Jake Boy looking in onto the back post. And that one appeared to be deflected out. But as you look down at Edvin Urasevich, his whistle brings it to a close. What an afternoon, and it's a 4-3 win for the Sounders. Their 10th victory of the campaign. Columbus were on the rise in the East. Having locked down the defense, Robert Warziha was able to send Andy Iroh to Toronto. The trade saw youngster Tony Chani join the crew roster, but he needed more time with the team to get the call. Jeff Cunningham was looking to finally become the all-time leading scorer, but he would have to do so off the bench. San Jose had seen their rising up the West sputter and dive after a dismal month. If Chris Wondolowski could not provide his early season offense, perhaps the Earthquakes could turn to David Bingham. The backup keeper scored this long goal against Premier League club West Brom earlier this week. Of course, the Quakes could also look to recently acquired Nana Atacora, Alan Gordon, and Jacob Peterson from Toronto. Frank Yallop hoped Peterson could be the answer on the right wing, while the others add depth on the road to the playoffs. Dwight Burgess and Duncan Otten had the cross-country battle from Crew Stadium. It is hot, it is humid, but there is a nice breeze blowing, enough to keep many in their Crew Stadium seats comfortable. But as usual, we see very little movement of the corner flags around the pitch itself. I don't think the breeze is going to be much of a factor. He has, and he's formed a great partnership with Chad Marshall. Stevenson will have a go from distance, and he puts it off the post to the left of William Hesmer. And we see it again, Stevenson here just bent, getting a nice bend on the ball around Will Hesmer off the outside of the post, and that's a get-out-of-jail-free card early for Columbus. San Jose comes into this one, five wins, six losses, seven draws. 
have a plus one outscoring the opposition 22 21 there's room now and there's a good shot and up high to get his mid on it is william hesmer see it again dawkins getting out of his feet and really gets a nice little bobble as he hits it and a great great fingertip over the bar there from will hesmer can he get out of danger now in the dribble and then bends the ball for rogers and rogers is on side and rogers is in the box takes a shot it's deflected down and can't get there save butch is a good one Puts it in the right spot, but Bush doing a great job. And that's a great save. We have to just, uh, just pull the trigger and then um, hit it the ball hard. We try to, to place it, and, and then just sometimes it's just too much. Tommy Hyman into the game right now. What do you need to see from him specifically? Uh, we, need, we need him presence in the box. Uh, we're putting him crosses in, but obviously we, um, we didn't have anybody that, uh, that would finish it. So hopefully, you know, he's going to do that. All right, Coach, thank you. Appreciate it. Guys, listen it back up to you. Ekpo's on the move. Slots to Mendoza. He's got the left shoe, and he shoots high. Well, a quick exchange at either end of the field. Let's begin with the earthquakes. Chad Marshall just misjudging that one, and Will Hesmer, a kick save, doing his starfish jump, and got a bit lucky there. And then Mendoza, a beautiful through ball, and he definitely want to have that back, just blazes it over the bar. Garrett working hard. I'll tell you what, that is great work from Eric Garrett. Mendoza for Rodgers, deflected, and it rolls right to Mendoza! Kick save and a beauty! And again, he gets a good opportunity on his right foot this time and just can't get enough on it to get it past Bush. As Bush was laying down and making himself long. There's an opportunity, what a save! And that's a great cross in. Just going over Miranda, good header back across, and Will Hesmer fingertips again. Cunningham spins to the middle. Accelerates from one. Plays Heinemann, slips past him, Mirren on the back side, great save, Bush! The crew seconds away from moving into a first place tie atop the Eastern Conference with New York and Philadelphia. And that's the way it's gonna go. Huge crowd out tonight to celebrate the return of Brian McBride. They leave a little bit disappointed, I have to think, over the fact that Columbus is held to a scoreless draw. Coming up. Houston hosts a streaking sporting time. Every week, MLSsoccer.com provides you the opportunity to select the goal of the week winner. You can choose between the five nominees directly on MLSsoccer.com on the AT&T Goal of the Week page. You can also send in your vote by texting the corresponding goal to code 22442. Winners are announced every Friday. So make sure you vote early and often, keeping in mind polls close at 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on Thursdays. Winners so far include Juan Agudelo of the New York Red Bulls, Javier Martina from Toronto FC, and O'Brien White of the Seattle Sounders.